I'm Seamus Garvey. I'm a professor of dynamics in mechanical engineering, and I have a long interest, a long standing interest in wind power generation. And I've been proposing for five years, maybe more than five years, a new way to convert the energy from a big wind turbine um, to, to make it uh, both cheap and compatible with energy storage. And this little piece that I'm going to pop inside the capsule is, is a key element in that story. My overall concept is that instead of connecting the turbine of a wind turbine uh, directly to a generator or through a gearbox, that you in fact convert the power inside the rotor. And the way that that happens is that the rotor itself, as blades rise up, they have masses inside, and those masses move along the blade and act as pistons compressing the air. Now that is one of those uh, prototype pistons. Uh, that piston is about 30 kilograms in weight, and it's a very simple device, essentially a lump of mass, but there's a little complexity inside it. Um, and this is a small piston that belongs on the inside of that. And this piston is specially engineered such that when the big piston comes towards the end of its stroke, this carries on moving downwards inside the big piston and squeezes out a little volume of water that helps to seal around the outside of the big piston. Well, I think if somebody digs this up in 200 years time, the first thing they'll struggle with is dating it because they'll wonder, why did this come from 2012? Why wasn't this done in 1900? Um, and the fact is that it's only a, a good idea because of the size of wind turbines. So in 2012, 2014, uh, wind turbines are becoming so big that the, the uh, gearbox and the drive shaft are becoming significant costs. And previously, they were not that big. Um, so it's a very timely moment right now. And in, let's say, 20 years' time, this will look obvious. We're, we're going to see very big changes in wind turbines over the next 100 years. Some of those changes are actually going to seem as if we've gone backwards. So one thing I predict is that we're going to see cable bracing on the rotors so that the blades on the, on the rotor are connected together. And that will be both in the plane of the blades and also pulling, pulling the blades forward to help them react the wind. A second thing is that for offshore machines, we won't see them on tall towers. We'll see them on big triangular type frames that suspend them much better, more effectively. And the third one is that, uh, that there will be these pistons converting the energy internally inside those turbines and making compressed air directly rather than electricity. Do I feel like I'm contributing? Uh, I, I, I'm only contributing if this idea actually turns out to, to succeed. So if it, if it doesn't succeed, then clearly there is no contribution. In my view, it's inevitable. It's inevitable that it will succeed because the laws of scaling are against all of the other technologies. And if you study the engineering behind this, it's obvious that it will succeed. The question is, will it succeed inside a meaningful time frame for me? And sadly, I think there's a, some doubt about that. Um, I, I've had uh, plenty of experience of explaining what seemed obvious to me to other people uh, in a position to do something about it, and they find it less than obvious. So do I feel I'm making a difference? Definitely making a difference. Will I make a difference in sufficient time to, to keep my wife in a life of luxury? Potentially questionable. I suppose there's some very exciting materials that I'd like to see come into engineering impact, and in particular, uh, graphene is much talked about, and it's really a scientific curiosity at the moment, uh, which hasn't yet made the kind of impact that it can have. But when you get a material with a strength to weight ratio like graphene, all sorts of things become possible mechanically that previously were impossible. Interestingly, I don't think of myself as a scientist. I think of myself as an engineer. Um, and what's my best achievement or proudest achievement as an engineer? It has been making things work uh, and preventing things from not working. And there have been one or two really nice instances where I've done a small bit of consultancy at a time when it was still possible to make a machine work that wouldn't otherwise have worked, and that has paid off beautifully. I don't have a scientific message, uh, I have a personal message, which is, uh, if at first you don't succeed, try again, and then again, and then again. I think it looks like a very decent piece of mechanical engineering. As a pressure vessel, this window isn't up to it, but the rest is great.